Doreen. Is your public image a true reflection of who you are? Um, the way that I see the media portray me, I can say definitely is not not the way that I am. How do you feel the media portrays you? Um, I've seen the media portray me like I'm a gangster. I'm a, or I'm at times I'm a I'm a cold individual. Or I'm a, just a shrewd businessman, which is just not the case. Who are you? you know what I'm saying. My name is Sean Combs. Um, I'm a young black man that I, j I just had a dream to to just be successful in life. <laughs> Don't be up on the stage like there's no fucking regular degla, all right? This shit is motherfucking history. Last night, we was human. But tonight, we're going to superhuman. We're going to go fuck that stage up tonight. May 20th, Barclays. The entire Puff Daddy Bad Boy family will be together. Those tickets sold out quick like. Yeah. Super quick. So what we doing yeah. now, Puff? What's the movement? We coming back home. It's 20 years of hits. We've never all been on the same stage at the same time. Both yeah. shows sold out already. Quick. First show sold out in seven minutes. God works so crazy. There's something booked in there. We're yeah. supposed to do one show. We have this problem. We get a call. They say the people just canceled. And it's on Biggie's birthday. We put the show up, it sells out in two hours. New York, this is your concert. Brooklyn, we coming home, let's go. You want me to treat you like a pro athlete. So this, what's gonna happen is kind of the equivalent of a playoff game, right? Let's look at the shoulder. Come on, go ahead and sit up. Oh my goodness, and it's gotten a little worse. Huh? I reached for something yesterday. I just felt like it almost tore. But, I mean, the reason why this, I have to, this is like my fourth one, is it my posture, or do I just have bad luck? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe go too hard. I don't know. <laughs> my life has been a, with Star Wars, when they have all the different parts of the movies. You know, it started as a trilogy, and then it was just Star Wars. They just started naming it different things. That's how my life has been. So I've had romantic comedies, I've had horror stories. I've had suspense thrillers, action movies, gangster films, and I'm still in this movie. One of the most passionate people Yo, that Jedi I've ever met. Jedi mind trick slash Excellent. prophecy Moses. Really he was a real friend. Puff did everything. He's a big brother. Such a ball over there. Oh, and Puffy is once again a genius. The war that he has going on on the inside of his own legacy. The concept of the tour is a historical retrospective of the past and the future from one of the world's most successful hip hop and R&B labels. This show is going to take you on an emotional musical journey from past to future. All of the things that would take you out of your zone and insecurities on stage, we're not letting that happen. We want to celebrate who we are. If somebody is chubby, we embracing that. If somebody's 45, we embracing that. We want to hit them with that pure, uncut, 1,000% who we are.
come here. Just have him come here. I still want to be He's, he's thinking the more he does, the better. Mm. And that's always opposite. You know my philosophy, less that's is more. That's every artist, right? It would be easier for him to do less when you're in the moment of it. You think from a different head, which mm. is why I generally am the creative director to creative superstars because I understand that process. But I've never been in it with this time constraint. Everybody always asks me what it's like to work for Puffy. I've known him for so long. What is with Black the slow pan? What is with the slow Give me the pan? Give me the camera. I was a dancer. I first met him. He was AR of Uptown Records. It's not anything for the faint, lighthearted, or weak minded, honey. Do not sign up for this. We're trying to represent a legacy of music, and Puff wants the best performance, the best, the best execution. The very first time. I met Puff, the very first words he said to me, I can't remember, but I do remember his energy always being that of, we're gonna, we're gonna win. Puff was always kind of spoiled and Dennis the Menace. Sometimes they pick you on the team to play basketball, sometimes they don't. Some kids try to play better, get picked, or some kids get resentful and say, I'm just going to be a success, and I'm going to fire the team. And I might not let none of y'all play. I don't think that um, Puff had a big circle of friends. Puff strikes me as the kind of kid who was hanging out with you and still thinking about the future. I used to have to sit outside my house and watch you know, my my neighbors across the street swim in their pool. And they pool was right in front of my step. And I'd be over there on the side on the stoop just looking like, please invite me over, I'm hot. And um, it started to build this thing in me, man, where I was like, I don't like this feeling. Mm-mm. I don't like this. I want me a pool too. just wants to start a fashion war. <laughs> Look at me. I knew his face before I knew his name. He had like what you called, he had a little extra juice back then. Like, if, you know, like Juice Crew All Stars or the movie Juice. Like if you got juice, you got juice. How did he get backstage? How did he get on stage? This dude is everywhere. That, that slim dude with the, with the high top fade. He's everywhere. But what does he do? Oh, he's a party promoter. He knew what was going on. So uh, he was showing me what's going on. I always thought about going on tour with you, but I was just like, yo, the vibe is two different vibes. Not anymore. Yeah, and then <laughs> now when I hear the shit it's together, shit, it's yeah. the perfect shit. Uh -huh. This shit is like, you know, it's black glamour. That's the whole, con the whole concept of the whole tour is black excellence. Right. Our journey, where we came from, our ups and downs, look how we living now. Yeah. It's, it can happen, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We got our shit together, we made it up out of our circumstances, and it's just like, there's like no limitation. We doing it right now. Right. Well, cheers to you, man. Thank cheers you for doing the show. For sure. I'm excited. Come on, you know it's that? too important. And I'm, know, and I'm gonna know the words to your joints, too. I'm gonna rehearse. So I'm there for you, you know? For the first time. <laughs> for the first time, <laughs> ever. <laughs> when the Sugar Hill game talk about, I wish I had a color TV so I could see the Knicks play basketball. When hip hop started, we just wanted a small, we just wanted crumbs, you know, just a color TV. I started out delivering newspapers when I was 12, cleaning gas station bathrooms, and then I was a busboy, then I was a, a doorman. Anything I could do to get on, because I wanted my dream like, so bad, I was willing to do anything to get to it. I sold drugs for like a day. And I got chased by helicopters, doors got kicked down. It was probably like the unluckiest day for a drug dealer. I just knew that I was going to be in the music industry. So I want to go to the home of the flyness. I want to go to Uptown MCA Records. I want to learn. And I was going to be the greatest at what I do. What is this new music? 
I remember the first time Heavy D introduced me to Puff. Puff was, was talking to me about, I looked at Def Jam, I looked at Uptown, and I liked Uptown better. So I remember saying to myself, are you interviewing me or am I interviewing you? I remember one time I gave him a tape to run an errand, mm -hmm. and it was 10 blocks away. I picked up the phone to take a business call. Before I could hang up the phone, Puff came through the door with his tie flying like this, <laughs> saying, what else can I do? I said, <laughs> how did you how did you get there so fast? He said, I ran in, I ran back. I love and it. I thought to myself, this is a problem. Andre Ralph, Puff Daddy, a protege. Protege. Yes, yes. Puffy. You know, that was the genius of Andre. He empowered the right people with the right dreams and the right ideas. Uptown mm -hmm. was the home of Ghetto Fabulous. Absolutely. And nobody loved Ghetto Fabulous like him. Like in the late 80s, it was rough. It was rough out there, but it was blackness in its full hip-hop go-go. It's in its full splendor and glory. And honestly, that was the birth of hip-hop soul. And so that gave birth to the way I heard music and the way I saw fashion. I get this internship. I get a chance to produce my first record. Jodeci come and talk to me. This is their uh, platinum CD, Forever My Lady. Their single called Come and Talk to Me, Jodeci. It sells two million copies. We going from that to do Mary J. Blige. Everybody thought something special happened. Like Puff thought something special happened. The producers thought something special happened. Every girl does not look like Whitney Houston or I want to wear a sequence dress. Like the girls that I want as my girlfriend, they wearing Reeboks. They out here with asymmetric haircuts and bamboo earrings. They like tomboy cute flies. The biggest thing I took from Puff was to not be afraid or be apologetic for what I was. You know, if I was great, I was great. Really, really believed that. It was everything that I was. It was fly, and it was, I'm getting up out of this ghetto, and I'm gonna do it in a fly way. It was black rich. And I started getting a chance to have, you know, my own vision that was a product of Uptown. I'm the vice president of Uptown MCA and r and Artist Development, this is my new act. So a lot of people don't know that Biggie was signed to Uptown. So it's the notorious <laughs> big then. Yeah, it's yeah. B.I.G. Business yeah. instead of game. Right, okay. Tell them I told you. All right, now, fitting that we all playing games here, being that we all players, you know? Big was in my first video. We're in Brooklyn, you know, a bunch of gangsters around, real money on the tables, and we was having the best time ever. He had a show that night at the Apollo. And I remember Puff pulling up when he came and told him, yo, we got to go. Big left. <laughs> Puff was Big's big brother. Puff was instrumental in pushing him in that direction, knowing it's cool to be respected on the block, rap really tough, and you know, do 100 pull-ups on the light pole. But you want to come out here, and you better come see this whole world. Make your loose, knock your loose, knock your loose. Big and I, we went to the same high school, but I didn't really know him. I never heard him rap. Back then, it was a new rapper popping up all the time. It was, rap was new, so everybody was trying to do it. Lo, nobody knew he wrote rhymes for a very long time. That's when I was like, yo, dog, like, why? Like, damn, you get busy like that? Right. Well, I don't know, it's B.I.G. hood right here, right? Always. Always, baby. We all lived on this one, this one block right here. Lil' Kim lived on St. James. Big was 226, I was 272. That window right there. That was a big window. When we come upstairs there and smoke, and he put records together, all right here. All right, baby, do you mind for We were just some badass kids. He wanted to try to save our lives, that was it. I didn't realize it back then, but he was trying to get us off the street. By the grace of God, I'm still here to sit here and support it and, and keep the legacy alive of what we do. Yeah, he definitely saved my life. I say that every day. We're just looking at the charts. You need to get the chart. Boom, boom. What? One. Rap your bitch if you love hip hop. Rub your titties if you love big pop. 
Yeah, I'm at the house. Yeah, 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 just come by, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm in work mode, but I was just letting you know what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? If y'all not, if you can't see my face, you're in the wrong place. You have to fix your energy. It's not, that's not, you have to fix your energy or else you have to go. You have to fix your energy. That's all I'm asking you out of respect. Just fix your energy. All right, so go for a walk, fix your energy, because I'm not, I'm not feeling it. Fix your energy, brother, we got work to do, for real. I was 19, I was a millionaire. I had a lot of power. I was the introduction of the young executive. And I, I didn't know how to work well with others. Hey, yo, dog, what are you talking about? You telling me like I'm on some bullshit? I ain't on no bullshit with you. I don't want no problems with you. Come on. Puff got fired because Puff was crazy. Puff was walking around the office with, with his shirt off. I'm gonna be so drunk and high by Wednesday at 8 o'clock. I'm not really gonna give a fuck. But I give a fuck. I would have to get him out of trouble. And one day, um, I come in and I have an argument with the general manager, and he's like the mid-40s white man. And then I uh, shirt off, I punch him in the face. You don't ever disrespect nobody that's down with me, motherfucker. It's the only time I'm gonna pick the dancers. Can I choose from? Are you just telling me this is all I have to choose from? Mm -hmm. Man, that's not part of the ball game. It's, it's, it's not even like, it's not, it's, it's not even possible. No, this is just the audition tapes. So yeah, not even possible, yeah. Nah, I want it. Can I see it? See it? I just didn't understand conflict resolution. I didn't understand the corporate culture. I just knew that I was fighting for the artists and the greater good of black artists worldwide. So you got an album deal popping up? No doubt, doing no doubt. September, album gonna drop in September. Like Hardcore. MCA? MCA Records? Yeah, Uptown, Bad Boy Manager. When Puff delivered me the Biggie album to MCA, the president's assistant heard it and she was like, we can't put that out. Those that produce these types of records have a responsibility. Uh, they can't just hide behind free speech. And I hope in the future that they will exercise better a concern for what these records will do on the street. I'm thinking to myself, how is the secretary going to dictate what the label puts out? And why are they put me in the middle of a generation's voice? It was such a culture shock. I know that I, what I'm doing is going to change the whole game. I know what I'm doing is, is helping to change the world. I was like ready to die for this thing. And Puff gassed me up. Like, why is the white man talking to you like this, Drake? MCA was a corporation, and so he forced Andre to make a decision. When Puff got fired, he was on payroll, and his artists were on payroll. He's still recording his artists, and he was able to go and find the best deal. So I never fired him to hurt him. I fired him and basically made him rich. <laughs> I really didn't know that much about puppies. I did take the meeting. Everybody thinks that everybody in this business is first of all white. And it was no question that he had the vision that a hip hop revolution was coming. What would it take to give you the training to be so successful? I mean, just keeping it real and listening to all the people and the viewers out there. He needed my expertise to conquer, if you will, top 40. I was skeptical. People like things that are real, so that means the cream rises to the top. Boy so I asked Puffy, I said, you know, what music do you have? Puffy played me Flavor in Your Ear by Craig Mack. That sold me. Just like you the blab, robotic Let Puff at the club out in the hat and say, well, listen, you have a choice of either flowing with me or you can stay here with Andre Harrell and I'm in Uptown because this is what I promised you in the beginning. I said, nah, I'm flow with you. And he picked out this one joint, this beat. Um, it was just boom, boom, and flavor. So it, I came back to him in a week with it. We went in the studio, and it was me and Moby and this guy by the name of Har Pierre. We started with one phone, one computer. We slept on the floor. Walking into the Scarsdale house, 6 Cobra Drive. A music company at that time, you probably wouldn't find in any basement of any house. So when it comes to, like, Total, Craig Mack, 112, Faith, all the early beginnings, they were really coming to the house, and we started making music. And really, that was the start of it. Yeah. This is it, Bad Boy Detainment. Bad Boy Detainment. He took it to an aspirational level that no one had ever seen. And as our young black men in America, when he first got that $40 million check from Clive Davis, that made us say, oh, OK. We know our worth now. Like living that. out a dream, you know what I'm saying? You're a black man just living out a dream. So, yeah. Even like recording records like Juicy, you know, that was Puff was instrumental in pushing him in that direction. My man, he gonna sit in here, write a hit. You're writing this song for like 30 motherfucking days. 
there ain't no excuse for that. But too much balling, enjoying yourself, you know. Well, I love to do it, man. <laughs> like in rap, it was a whole thing, like, you know, no matter what I do, I'm keeping it real, I'm gonna stay on this block. Right. And our feeling, you know, was like, yeah, I'll see you when I get back. <laughs> And once we dropped Juicy, Bad Boy became the fastest growing boutique label in history. Everything was Bad Boy. It's been sharp, like, you know, I, I mean, I was a hustler, and then boom, I was a rapper. I only watched him from afar, you know, and I saw he was making music that was making the ground shake. Small, nominated for a Grammy. All those records to him. I had to call my protege, but he's selling more records than me right now. You would be in the clubs, and you would hear 15 records playing that Puff put his hands on. He had all these different artists and making them successful. It's just the beginning, y'all. Just the beginning. When you have that kind of consistency, you've got to pay attention to it. There's a lot. There's a lot that goes into that. Platinum single with Craig Mack. Forty million dollar check. Then he came to me. It's me, sure. Yeah, I'm young, I'm pretty. Mace came along and we just started dancing. Transforming the idea of being a record company. Mace was great. We had faith. Double platinum. I'm going to be first lady on Puff Daddy's label. Move the needle of popular culture. And then he came with total. Hip hop revolution. To becoming like a young adult movie. Puffy had a vision. Out of control. Vision. One, two, three. A platinum, double platinum single. I just try to make some of this. It was too much success, too quick. With kings and queens. Bad Boy was a movement. A movement. Five platinum records in a row out the gate. It was just like, it would make it movies. We wanted to go to happy times. We wanted to be as far away from being gangster as could be. Bad Boy is that dream. We can dress up in a suit, and we can have our pants sag all in the same day. We put on shiny suits. Mace, a pretty boy from Harlem with a charismatic smile. He's just returned from his mission from God. This is a nice crib. When I used to live with Puff, it was in a brownstone on downtown New York. I signed with Puff probably 20 years ago. Right after that, we did the Only You video. you want to. All you want to, money, I'm a bunch you. Girl, I want to flaunt you. Right. Everything just took off from the first day I showed up. Cruz, Cassius. You ready? Yeah, always. <laughs> oh, oh, always good. Oh. Not kids. I'm going on a skinny vibe. I'm yeah. going to join a skinny coach. You, 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 you perfect just the way you are, no matter what. You know what I'm saying? Before we even get started, like trying to get on the same page, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that we don't have no, no bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You and I never had any real issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever. yeah. I could think. Yeah, yeah. So. Puff took me to the first concert. It was R. Kelly and Bone Thugs. And Puff was like, yo, do what I'm telling you, and we're going to be as big as this. And every time I didn't want to do something, he would remind me of that. I argued with him for weeks about that shiny suit. He's like, I'm not putting that on. He's like, remember what I told you. You ain't little bro no more. You a grown ass man. Like you got shit to teach me. You got journeys and travels that you've seen, places that you've been that you've been ahead of, so you can give me more knowledge. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just arriving <laughs> out of the darkness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Father, we thank you for making us one in our mind and our spirit, helping us to be the best performance we ever had. Thank you for mending relationships, making us strong and making us one as a bad boy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're in Lettitz outside of Philly. It's an amazing place to rehearse. You can put your entire stage up. You can rig your lights. You can try your tricks, your toasters, your pyro, your band, your dancers. For me, it's like a creative cocoon. When I first walked in, I was like, holy shit. 
This is a huge stage. Does my voice still sound the same a little? Yeah, I like pitch, like your pitch is different, but your voice is still the same. How do you even feel about me doing the show? I feel good for you. But you have to at least know one Biggie song. I mean, you guys know Hypnotize, right? Yeah. And then Juicy. Yes. Wait. I don't know that song. And if you don't know, now you know. It was my first time seeing Keisha in like 16 years. You can have some too. We love you. About the daughter. Jesus, this is gonna be so much fun. One twelve has arrived. We're in the building. So I got some really sweet stuff for you. Just okay. one number I need you to focus okay. on. They're gonna love it. They're gonna love it. What? They're gonna love it. They're gonna love it. They're gonna love it. I think it's fucking amazing. I never knew this place was this fucking big. I know it was big, but I didn't know it was this big. How are you? Everybody's a little older now, so they're more mature. Now, we don't have yeah, 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 yeah. to see my man. Sorry, buddy. Legendary, darling. Legendary. <laughs> <laughs> 16 years, dude, yeah. since I've been on stage. Yeah. yeah. For real, for real? For real, for real. Oh, my goodness. I'm gonna kill it now. Yeah. Uh oh. That's good. It's good. See, see that stack? Happen again. Don't worry. That's a that bounce I don't know about. <laughs> if you're going to have a reunion, this is the way you celebrate <laughs> so many artists that have given so much and who have been recognized. When we first started, it was about ego, it was about. You know, I'm better than you. I do it better than you. You know I'm better than you. This is more like, you made me better. You're the reason we were able to do it this big. So now we want to do it big for you. I want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And now we're all officially family. So let's get this shit going, get the show on the road. Laurie and the dancers are there, the band set up. He hasn't seen the stage yet. So that his reaction, his first yeah, reaction. Yeah, it's gonna be epic. I'm just hoping it's, it's set up nice because they're just not able to take it all down. Man, y'all really, really setting up the drama. This shit better be a motherfucker. Yeah, let's see it. Ready? Yeah. Take them up 10 feet. Drum roll, please. What the fuck? <laughs> those, are, those lights are cheap as fuck. Those lights, I could go and buy those box lights or whatever, or at least it looks like them. I want to be on the record right now while there's somebody you could call that I do not like the rig. Mm -hmm. If I had to make a decision right now, mm -hmm. I would change the rig right now. I like God light. God ain't gonna come breaking through. When God's light comes through, shoo, it just hits you like it's God's lights. I don't want the Chrysler that looks like the Phantom. I want the Phantom. I swear, I'm gonna he's take Sean going Combs and hide him in this hey, elevator, and then I'm hey, not gonna push the up button. Hey, he's an idiot. Hey, I mean, a lovely he, he, idiot. He, so. he, Woo! Go for pop. No, actually, don't go for pop. Everybody give yourselves a round of applause. Put your hands together one time. So this energy going. Yeah. Yeah. Motivation is to celebrate these 20 years of ups, downs, trials, tribulation, having a dream from Lil' Kim when you was having your dream. I was having my dream in Mount Vernon. Macy was running up on me. You know, a Jack the Rapper. This is an epic saga of black excellence. Yes. This is our story, our journey. They're not just records. The words mean something different. Your hip hop, R&B legends, superstars. We're gonna have to go to this place of freedom that you're not gonna be able to snap into. But the countdown has begun. Years because I will always just dream about. Yeah. I knew it wasn't done. We've all grown up. Life is way too short. Yep. And um, 
And that's the way this whole thing's gonna be. I wanna show y'all this for y'all. Put your ears in real okay. quick. Well, what's free to you? Mean? What's, what's free whatever. to me? Yeah. Same thing is to you. You tell me. No, no, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Cause I've been talking for it's such a long time. It's just a feeling. It's just a feeling. It's like, how do you tell somebody how it feels to be in love? You cannot do it to save your life. You can describe things, but you can't tell them. But you know it when it happens. That's what I mean by free. I've had a couple of times on stage when I really felt free. And that's something else. That's oh. really something else. Ready, Party people. Ain't no place to be. Uh -huh. It's about that time. To what you talk about going out? Headrest, red legs, TVs, all up in the headrest. Try and live it up. Ride you, pick a truck. Beats all good it up. Stick a kid in the truck. Niggas the jockey. Kill a nigga for the figure. How you figure? Your cheddar would be better. But better inside of a better. Nobody do it better. Bet I wet you like hurricanes and typhoons. Got buffoons eating my pussy while I watch cartoons. You know about life after kicking the kid in. Since me and my men in. The flip seven grid am. Strid am. The flow is forbidden. Either you riding or you dying, cause we swinging now. Oh, it's Fun and freedom. Yeah. Fun and freedom, baby. Fun and freedom. It's no guy slicker than this young fly mister. Nickel nine liquor, floor you die quicker. This bedtime, out of town, pop ripper. Turn Chris Dallas to a crooked eye sipper. I think the early days of Bad Boy, it was very, very much like Bad Boy family. I think family is something that I've never really had. That's honestly how I had looked at Motown, and I had looked at Def Jam, and I had looked at Uptown. Like, their artists were like a family. I got you. Nah, just don't come too close. I got it far back. I got a message, right? I want to give things that nobody's seen in a show from us. Everybody's seen a show. They haven't seen us together. It's about giving what they heard, but also like that little extra touch of, yo, this is a special night, a special time, a special tour, you know, uh, elevated performance. We met actually at this photo shoot that Puff was just trying to put together for all of the new artists. Big was there with, you know, most of Junior Mafia. He asked me, could I give them a ride? Could they ride with me back to Brooklyn? You, they were joking the whole way, you know, <laughs> trying to crack jokes on me too. And then, you know, I got it. You know, I'm quick on the comeback. <laughs> but um, when I dropped him off, he was like, okay, I'm gonna call you. And I things in common aside from uh, smoking weed <laughs> and being artists on Bad Boy. No, he was just really cool and he told me after a couple of weeks, like, I'm gonna marry you. And I became Mrs. Faith Evans Wallace. <laughs> No time for fake niggas. Just sip some crystal with these real niggas. The Faith and Kim thing has always been awkward because I know that they all really loved each other a lot. You know, I think it's possible to love more than one person. I think Biggie was in love with more than one person. Hi, Mama. This is funny. 
Usually by the product, sometimes the bottom. Sticky for your cream and your riches. Jazzle to ball, Timmy Moore, Miss Diane, and all them rich bitches. Nothing make a woman feel better. They put better than I'm a better. But the letters in mad cheddar. Chilling in the bins of my amigo. Trying to stick a nigga for his case. So, if you say so, then I'm the same chick that you want to get with. Lick up in my twat. Gotta hit the spot. It's not. Don't test the boom, boom, nani, 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 nani. Yeah. So you gotta pick me up. I got you, baby. You straight. I, I see you shaking though. <laughs> like the stage? Yeah, I love it. But I'm telling you, I'm not wearing heels. Okay. I'm not doing it. <laughs> and there's a part of the intro that I want to add. Biggie says, "I took the hungry members. I took little Kim. She was hungry. You know what? What? And then at the end, it goes, "I don't think no female MC can see Kim. I think that should go in the intro." Okay, you gotta get it. I got it. Yeah. I'll send it to you. I'll send my yeah. email. I know what big meant to me, and I know what I meant to big. Nobody's mm. gonna take that from me. I don't mm. care, whatever you mm. wanna say, you know? And nobody knew what we talked about when we were in private. You know, no one knew what we did when we were together by ourselves. Like we all grow up, we've all made mistakes, all of us, you know what I'm saying? And it's just one thing that, you know, you really holding on to. No, I already know where you're going. Don't do it, don't do it. Like, you gonna at least have a conversation? No. Why not? not? After he passed away, I did my damn best to make sure I took care of every fucking body and all the motherfuckers turned on me and it slapped my face. And I never even cried about it, bitched about it to nobody. I just kept moving. Bad Boy is known for the, for the hits, like everything Puffy touched just went straight to the top of the charts. And then to have such a, a tragic moment. The one party that sticks out for me the most, and I said, after this, I'm not sitting nowhere near Puff. We were with Puff, and we were all partying. We was up in VIP. I just know somebody just started shooting. Let the music go. Let the music go, baby. I don't think people realize how serious that situation was. I'll be waking up paranoid. I'll be really scared. I think somebody was trying to kill me. I was never pro gangster rap. It, it was a very dangerous time because a lot happened during that period. The stars of that music suffered similar fatalities as the people they were telling stories about. This hour, the subject is Tupac Shakur, shot five times in the lobby of this Manhattan building. Tupac had earlier implicated bad boy producer Sean Puffy Combs and star artist and notorious B.I.G. The first time Tupac was shot in New York and later on they were accusing Big and them or whoever of being involved, he was really hurt about it. Like, I, 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 he really felt like they were friends. Have a good summer, one man against one man made a whole West Coast hate a whole East Coast and vice versa. Hi, I'm Tabitha Soren with MTV News. Controversial rapper and actor Tupac Shakur has died in a Las Vegas hospital of complications from several bullet wounds sustained Saturday night, September 7th. He was 25 years old. Tupac was one of our representatives like Malcolm, like Martin, you know what I'm saying? And now Tupac gone. That was our voice. When you brought up around that type of lifestyle where you Total comes all your life, and then you get a record deal. It's kind of hard to break that habit. I know some people that just can't leave their gun no matter how much money they got. The more money you make, the more problems you get. And jealousy and envy is, is something that comes with the territory, man. A lot of people, it's just negative energy, like my man Puff say. It just surrounds you. He was just trying to make good music and represent for everybody, East, West. He also had did a tribute record to California called Going Back to Cali. I'm going, going back, back to Cali. What's up, Cali? It's mad hot. <laughs> <laughs> I got to choose the coast. I got to choose the east. I live out there, so don't go there. But that don't mean a nigga can't rest in the west. Speaking like rest in the west. I'm just getting over, you know what I'm saying, this whole situation with this East Coast, West Coast thing. You know what I, mean? I just came over, you know what I'm saying? Trying to, like, basically squash it. We really felt like if we went out, and we could make it through a night out in L.A. That would just really send a tone to L.A. and everybody that everything was all right, because everybody was scared to death. <laughs> We had already lost Tupac. We just wanted everything to be all right. I'm in the West right now. If you need me, 
you want to see me, talk to me, whatever you want to do, cool. now's the time. Call on out. Oh. Vibe party that Quincy Jones threw. Biggie was supposed to be on a plane to London. He said he wanted to stay and just party with me. His leg was broke, so he couldn't move around. So I said, I'm gonna sit down with you all night. I'm just gonna rock with you. So that's why you see a picture of me and him sitting down. I was following Big's lead on, like, you know, we're gonna do this peace tour. And, you know, it, it didn't work out. We're leaving. Our car pulled up, big set right there, smoked him a cigarette. Right before he got in the car, he took some pulls on the cigarette. He didn't even smoke like that, you know? He had just smoke a cigarette every now and then. He lit a cigarette, smoked like two, like two three pulls. Puff car was in front of us. His car came out first, and he got in his car. Security got with him. We got in our car, and we pulled out. We made a right at that light and chilled for about a second. And a car just rolled up, man, and started. Start firing shots in that motherfucker. Christopher Wallace. Rap star was killed in an early morning drive-by shooting. In a war between East Coast and West Coast rap music rivals. As soon as them shots went off, like, I knew. Even when, you know, I run to the car and I, um, you know, I see him, I know. I felt a lot of bad boy. Sorry. I felt a lot of uh, bad boy, you know, die when Big passed away. Everything came crashing down, like the whole entire castle, empire, everything. The most tragic story ever. You know, I died that night in that car. We're big. brung his body through here. The nigga damn near dying, hanging on the side of their windows, hanging on the roof, sitting outside on their fucking fire escape, sitting on their rods on the window, bending them shits like really out here just to get that last glimpse of him coming through his own neighborhood. It was like a royalty moment. It was like, you know, you, you see those processions on TV, and, you know, like some of the greats, like the greats, the Kennedys, and, you know, it was, it was it was that moment. It was our version of it. It was like a jubilant celebration, almost like the second line in New Orleans. I saw Puffman in the studio maybe, you know, a few weeks after the funeral, and uh, I remember looking at his face, and I looked into his eyes, and I didn't really see anybody home. I didn't, I didn't really see, I didn't see nothing. I really feel like the tone of Bad Boy changed once Biggie passed. Big gets killed. They trying to kill me. My whole life was just over. We was ready to die, but we wasn't ready. Why the fuck we went to Cali? Niggas wasn't ready. Still see the image of little Kim crying. The rock ballin' hard, then it went silent. But we rise up like a phoenix, going for the penny. Driving down Lennox, by eight in the rain, with the motherfucking doors missing. Two main backs, the motherfucking floors missing. I guess I was blind, but now I'm 2020. Sun don't shine forever, but it's coming for me. Peace out to Rizzo, open the kids. And can't nobody stop me from shouting out big. Pictures of them more valuable than a Basquiat. Some of my spirit even died in the Cardi shot. Some of my spirit even died in the Cardi shot.
used to play that um, over Biggie, the Tom Fields and all. It's not real busy, but you got to kind of catch the feel with him. You know what I'm saying? You can't play to the beat. You got to play to how he's saying it. You got to do, you got to find some unique feel. So I give you some time to like work on it though. Yeah. Let's, let's be, let, let's, let's go to the next joint. Just like the record, we just wasting time. It's never gonna fly. Alright, pop. It doesn't sound like the record. It's never gonna sound like the record without the right drums. So that sound exactly like the record. I want y'all to call me once y'all got it sounding like the record. Y'all playing this shit like we a wedding band or something. I don't know what the fuck is going on, but we ain't no wedding band. This shit's not the jazz festival, none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Let me be perfectly clear, and I don't give a fuck at this point. What has to be done? Who has to be called in? I can't do it. I don't have time. With it coming in 10 days, but... What, you want to go back and forth with me tonight? I want to tell you, I am on the same fucking page. You ain't going to have to tell me, like, this is what I got to... This is what you have to have. This is what's, what's only going on. My life don't work like that. I can make anything happen. Greatness is complicated. It's like going through the fire and coming out as pure gold. It's like iron sharpens irons. It's only for the best. Oh, why do you think the edit was wrong? Let, let me re-listen to it. It didn't feel, it felt off. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. that's why I'm pushing everybody. You know what I'm saying? Mama's got it. That's, that's why I'm pushing stage. everybody. It's so like you need to stay in your zone sound. because this is for everything shit. else. So don't worry, we're in, we're in. Stay in the zhuzh, okay. As I feel like customado with Mike Tyson, you know, I know that it's very difficult to be vulnerable. People have gone and failed and felt pain and love and had loss, because I understand exactly the moments of insecurity, the moments of doubt, the moments of fear, and how to look that in the eye and use it to your advantage. When something that big and that crazy happened, you know, you definitely need God in your life. Artists have only gone from bad boy to God. There's like really no in between. Craig Mack was just one of those artists that, you know, we kind of went our separate ways from each other. And then later on, I heard he had got saved and he wasn't making secular music anymore. We're in rehearsal right now and you understand, Puff is here, Mace, Total, Black Rob. 112, Carl Thomas, everyone is asking for you. Everyone's saying it's not even right if you don't perform. I know I'm blading on thick because I have to. I have to. I have to. I know what you're saying, man, but I just. The max like a soup. The max like a super in 10, dude. Yeah, I know. Burning up few things about that, nigga. I got you. Okay, I got you. <laughs> First of all, I could never judge what you're feeling. God loves you, so why would why, why would you think that he would say that, bring those thoughts into your mind that you're doing something, doing something wrong? Now, y'all ask the question, where's Craig Mack? Then you two played me at the tabernacle. I gave away my cars, turned in all my guns, because the Mack stayed with beef like hamburger buns. <laughs> When God come down for he touch the ground, you better praise the Lord. Praise God. One God, one Savior, one Lord all aboard singing praise the Lord. Praise We've gone through dramatic, dramatic things. The only place you're going to end up is God or crazy. Prosecutors are setting the stage in the weapons trial of rapper Sean Puffy Combs. Witnesses have yet placed a gun in the superstar Clearly hand. saw Combs' protege rapper Jamal Shine Barrow reach down and open it's fire in the, in the against Combs' co-defendant, co raising his shoulder. Next thing you know, he shot to jail for six years, and he got real religious. I would say we're the grooming ground for future pastors and saved individuals. But as you get older, you start realizing this is only going to go well if we do it his way. 
Our dreams, our plans, and our thoughts are going to have to take a back seat to what it is that he wants. I had all of these stories and all this knowledge of things that really you really couldn't share over music. So I have no choice but to just point towards God. Yesterday, everything was just so crazy and things wasn't right. And, you know, I've just been finding myself, like, worrying about it. And it just has it, me losing my voice, my body's breaking down, my knee, yeah. my legs. And... One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is that cast all your care upon God, mm -hmm. for he cares for you. You are who you are. And nothing changes that. Everything that we've been through, to be able to have everybody back on that stage, to stand there in unity, that's the victory. Everything else is going to take care of itself. No matter how good or bad, most of the time, if you're kind of left standing, it's something that you have to learn from. You know, God is really the only one that I knew could help me figure it out. After Big passed away, I never felt, I, I just really, all of those things didn't mean anything to me anymore. You know, I just went up to her and said hi, like I do to everybody when I come in the room, and she just happened to be more receptive. Just keep the energy going on. When Faith said the things she said to me, I really felt like she was coming from sincere face. It showed there was growth there and yeah. sincerity, and I felt like that was a relationship that was worth being bonded. I just did what I thought was the right thing. I truly believe when you're coming from the right place, you can't go wrong. Our story was the story of the feeling that everybody has felt. Everybody has felt like giving up. I just got up and started to fight. I remember Michael Jackson, the Motown 25 special. MTV, Madonna like a virgin. And I remember Puff with Sting and Mrs. You. Having a TV moment in music is very rare. It elevates you to such another level of superstar. And with the way he did his dance, he was like communicating his pain through his dance on that record. He was the only rap star to this day that had a television performance of that magnitude. It's kinda hard with you not around. Know you in heaven smiling down, watching us while we pray for you. I think that big kind of went and took it over the top as far as convincing him to be an artist. He always had a vision to be an artist in his own right. And you knew he wasn't a rapper, but then you go, well, why can't he rap? What a lot of people don't realize, uh, it was Big that called him P. Diddy. Big gave him that name. I didn't feel like I lost an artist. I felt like I lost a friend. He just loved me for the music he was and the man he was. I can't sing it without getting emotional. He made the No Way Out album, the No Way Out tour. He took that tour on like it was a movement. It made him rock star big. The record itself is really a landmark record. It's very difficult to shift gears. And he has shifted gears two or three times already. It's impossible to do it once. Things aren't gonna change overnight. And so you've gotta take your own initiative, just like you did, and just like I did. When you wanna be the president of the United States, you, you call your man. His movement and what he was doing in those days opened up another door for us. We're kings and queens, we belong everywhere. You know, just changing the course of how people perceive the culture, because, you know, art is hip hop. This is what the new Rolling Stones or Bon Jovi or U2 is. It's hip hop now. One, two, three, guys. You don't, you don't want me to do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. If we gotta yeah. run it, let's run it. Yeah. Yeah. In and Make out, you go happy. in and yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pam, Pam, it was good. Dancers on stage, you ready? No elevators are working, no curtains, no screens, nothing. Right, guys? You got, you're clear on that? So we're going to run straight through, and we're going to take notes? Yeah, I got you. 
And I need to play that Nina Simone thing I want to play real quick when they have it plugged in. If I need a little break, and I need to hear my mantra, I need to hear it. I've had a couple of times on stage, but I really felt free. And that's what now. That's what it looks like. Now. Like all, 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 like, like, I'll tell you what freedom is to me. No fear. I mean, really, no fear. I was a gentleman living in tenements. Now I'm swimming in all the women that be ten. Went from bad boy to the crushed liniment. Now my dividends be the new Benjamin. Oh Lincoln Center. Ain't no place like home, baby. And I'm from New York. Diddy runs the city. Welcome to my city. This is the city that has played our records the most. Everybody feels like they're a part of the show. What are you here for? Just... Oh, I'm going to have a concert tonight. Concert. Yeah. yeah. You know who I am? Yeah. What's my name? Pub Daddy. Pub Daddy. Yeah. That's my favorite one. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be honest, you know, everybody has been asking me, are you nervous? What's at stake is, honestly, our careers are at stake. The way we represent Biggie and the way we make this a moment in history is at stake. This is the biggest show of our lives. I just love the music. I just love everything it was about. I love the lyrics. They played a major role in our life, so we appreciate it. That's why we're here. Hey, come get right now. We're gonna work it out. 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 Bad Boy era is necessary, even talking about hip hop history. Over 20 years of hits, man. That's, that's incredible. We're gonna work it out, we're gonna work it out, submit. <laughs> It was for me probably one of the worst shows of my life, as far as for me. Um, maybe I tried to do too much. And, you know, I'm just disappointed in myself. Because I know I could do 70% better with no matter what. I got to embrace that. 
You know, that's the beauty of caring about something at a deeper level. And I care about this so much. The hardest moment was when Puff was coming up that riser and that fucking mic wasn't on. Yeah. was bouncing up and down. It was such a great response. Puff wouldn't be who he is if he didn't want the best, the best, the best, the best. And he wants this show to definitely be an, a, an experience that people will talk about for the next 10 to 20, 30 years. I think he's too hard on himself. He's too much in his head. Like, I told him today, like, I think he did amazing. I think he's, he don't have to beat himself up so much. You know, we haven't done this in a long time. It's like, you know, I mean, that, that, that's just the real. But you can't make time. We, you know, we, we needed two or more extra months. You can't make time. Everybody's doing the best that they can. Can you just try to face me a little bit so I can? <clears throat> can I get some tissue, please? Yeah. I got it. Everybody says I'm bugging, I'm being hard on myself, like being a dramatic little bitch. But nah, this is, it's not that. I, I, I care so much about what the people are seeing and about these records. Silence. Yes, I, I just will. Over us, but you have to, if you want this to heal up mm -hmm. within a week, you have to shut down completely. I'm physically tired, yes. Mentally tired, emotionally tired. You see at the ninth inning, so it's complicated to just stay the course and not give up. I feel for him. I know that it's very difficult to be vulnerable and strip away everything that people think you are and become something new in this moment. And for me, I get to see that vulnerability. I get to see that uncertainty. And I love it. I love when he's there because then his true magic comes out and he really is a great entertainer. I, 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 need, I, I just need I, I just need some way to connect with the crowd. And everybody needs to understand that today is his birthday, you know? And that's important to me. Love you, baby. When I rip this shit down, I'm gonna be more comfortable. I'm gonna be, you know, the fucking superhero that I am. I'm about to have one of the best shows of my life. Hey, girl, yeah, I'm going that back. Oh, I'm about to be like, yo, it's not going to be like that. Y'all yeah. hear it coming straight from Puff. You have a problem? We can get into it right now, y'all. Not a problem. Right, cool. Nothing's a fucking problem. All right, cool. Yeah! Somebody give me a towel? I need some towels, baby. I need some towels. Paying this call to be the boss. Time to get on Diddy time, baby. Time to get on Diddy time. I'm taking control of this. Uh, yeah. That's what I gotta get into, though. Some beat, nothing else matters. That pocket, nothing else matters. If you're in the spirit, nothing else matters. Gotta get into that spirit. Out of my brain and into my heart. Out of my brain and into my heart.
Hey, what's up, Ma? How are you? <laughs> I am there. Ma, I just need you to say extra, a special prayer for me tonight, OK? You know I will. All right. I love you, Ma. Not, not tonight. I'll do it tonight and tomorrow night and always. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love you. Okay, love. All right. Bye. OK, see you. Bye. bye. I wanted to thank y'all for working so hard. We crammed two months of work into um, two weeks. This has been the best experience of my life. The best experience of my life. Yeah! When you go through a journey, sometimes you need to be led. In order to be able to accomplish stuff like this, you need somebody to keep it in order. You need a general, you need a strategist. Doing something like this, it could just turn into chaos. The way Laurie has stepped up and kept us in order on time, I, I don't even think she slept for two weeks. Give it up for our fearless leader, Laurie Ann. And I was a starving dancer in New York, eating a bagel and meeting Puffy and dancing for Mary. And now I'm like, here. The best part was like, really feeling that he meant it. Like the sincerity was overwhelming. Because I've always been the general. He just has never admitted it. How about those We here, baby. It's been a long time. But we are here by the grace of God, honey. I'm going to be rehearsing, I'm going to be in the mirror, and I'm going to be ready, you know what I'm saying? I know you're going to be ready. Look, it's showtime. You're going to That's move. the vibration that we bring in the start of that life, Absolutely. that new life. That's right. I love you, man. All right. Hey, hey, you got to open up the doors, yo. You got to open up the doors. All right, Lorraine Conn, we, we, we in the final hours. So long, I like them, beloved. Yes, the TMX on stage. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I got What's up? <laughs> the door is open, bro. The doors are open, bro. Yeah, Lord, have your way. In the name of Jesus, we need you to show up and show out. Holy Spirit, do what you do. Tonight's nice, gonna be magical. not by sight. We live by faith, not by sight. Now, this ain't no regular night. Don't be up on the stage like there's no fucking regular degla. All right? This shit is motherfucking history. Tonight, we ain't gonna be fake being here celebrating Biggie in Brooklyn. You're gonna think of the moment that he meant something to you. You're gonna cry. You're gonna feel it. You're gonna have the Biggie and the Lord with you every step of the way. All right? Now, let's bow our heads. God, please, and bless us to know that with you, we can do anything, and tonight we are great. Bless us with the fearlessness to be free. Nina Simone, what does freedom mean? And it really touched me. Her answer was no fear. No fear. And if she could be like that half of her life, her life would be totally different. She said that there's times on stage where she felt that freedom. 
It's a new dawn, it's a new day. It's a new life for me, yeah. It's a new dawn, it's a new day. It's a new life for me. Man, it is something else. Something else. And I'm feeling good Fish in the sea You know how I feel River running free You know how I feel Blossom on the tree You know how I feel It's a new dawn It's a new day And fly out in the sun You know what I mean, don't you know? Butterflies all having fun You know what I mean Sleep in peace when day is done That's what I mean And this old world is a new world And a bold world for me Skills, man. You know what I'm saying? But well, my shit is straight now. There's no need to talk about the past. <laughs> Life starts to just fly past you so fast. Because we all started out as kids. The kid that was labeled bad never stayed in a straight line. Bad boy is that dream that we could be the first black billionaires. And that we, we could become world famous and not lose our minds. Thank you, thank you. Th thank you. Keep your dream going, baby. God bless. God bless. Dreams come true. Yes. Love you, baby. Love. When I was first starting out, you know, I didn't have no mercy. If you live life like that too much, I think your intentions could get misinterpreted. My intentions were just to make everybody the best. Says, for everybody to eat, to make history, and to inspire the world. And I think I did that in a, and I still plan on doing that in a bigger way, but I don't want to wake up, you know, old and have any regrets that I didn't develop as a man. And I just started getting better at this, like, maybe um, six weeks ago, so I don't want y'all to... <laughs> so th this, this is brand new. I'm still in this movie. And I just, I just plan on, I just know the ending and, and that it's going to end happily ever after.
Yo, the sun don't shine forever, but as long as it's here, then we might as well shine together. Better now than never, business before pleasure. P. Diddy and the fam, who you know do it better. I'm the definition of Pac Man, half drugs, ask the club, bad boy, that's what's up. After bucks, trust truth after us. No games, we ain't laughing much. What you know about going out, hey, where's red, let's TV, all up in the head, red. Try to live it up, I do, pick it up, peace off, play it up, see your kid, nigga, what? If he the pipe or pet them, I bet you did he bust them. Me, Bobby, tried to fuck them, I told him not to trust them. Lyrically, I dust them. Off like clap, hit hard like slash hammers. Bitch with that platinum brown. Put your hands in the air, make some noise to Mary J. Motherfucking Blood. You know what I'm saying? You got niggas that don't like me for whatever reason. You got niggas that don't want to see me rich. You got niggas that's mad because I'm always with they bitch. Then you got niggas that just don't like me. You know, the, those PhD niggas. But you know, I pop a lot of shit, but I back it up, though. See, there's a difference. A lot of niggas pop shit, and a lot of niggas don't make hits. But it's like this old bad boy shit, we come to bring it to y'all niggas. Me, B.I., Puff, Locks, whoever, Black Rock. If you wanna dance, we dance. Come on. Now, trick what, lace who? They ain't what mates do. Got a lot of girls that I love to replace you. Pay it to your face, boo, not behind your back. Niggas talk shit, we never mind that. Funny, never find that. Puff a dime sack, write hot shit. And make a nigga say but why that? Niggas know, we go against the Harlem gigolo. Get your hoe, lick a low, make the bitch drink it though. I represent honeys with money, fly guys and gents. Ride with the tents, that be 35%. Foes hope I lay, so I look both ways. Cops say it's okay. My tent smoke grace, no way. Nigga leave without handing me my shit. Got plans to get my land and my six. Niggas out of town don't understand this shit. Pop champagne like I want to champ and shit. Come on. Playing around the world and now ya ya. And we been playing a hate tape. I don't know when, I don't know why. Why they want us faded. I don't know why they hate us. Is it our ladies? Uh-huh. Or trying to say it. Uh, uh. Baby, baby. I was the one that of a million now I'm in beach houses cream to the ceiling right. I was a gentleman living in tenements 
Now I'm swimming in all the women that be tense. Went from bad boys to the crushed linen men. Now my dividends be the new Benjamins. Hoes of all complexions, I like cinnamon. Make sure you got some hoes, well, nigga, send them in. What you waiting for? Let the free show begin. How they came in a truck. Nah, fuck, that's a bitch. Mercedes, come here, baby. If you don't like it where it's hot and hazy, never shady. You must be crazy. It's ridiculous how you put your lips on this. Don't kiss right there, girl.